so conflict uh, so you can input or not uh, <laughs> It's uh, it's uh, it's I, it's not on the chart, but as someone working in the field, I think it is intractable. It is intractable, and the, the problem with it is that one has to keep. You know, one of the problems with intractable conflicts is that with the weakness of the intifada was that at the time it was so strong in terms of organizing, but there's lack of a framework for political formation afterwards. How do you deal with you know, the issue uh, of occupied territories in the face of a larger country like Israel? Israel is not a small country. Israel is a very important country. One argue that it also had, for example, nuclear weapons. But no one talks about this. People talk about Iran, but not Israel. I mean, so this is the power imbalance that you, you see in the world. But Bethany is not like that. Alhamdulillah, it's not like that. But, you know, 7,000 people died, so many people, tens of thousands injured. It's time to stop. It's time to stop. So, how? Not by relying on, you know, the government peace talk alone, but I think by encouraging hope with political solution. ครับในนามของคณะกรรมการจัดการประชุมเสวนาฝ่าวิกฤตปราลิสตายครับต้องขอขอบคุณท่านสรัจจาดร. เป็นอย่างสูงนะครับท่านเป็นอาจารย์ประจําอยู่คณะรัฐศาสตร์มหาวิทยาลัยธรรมศาสตร์ในการอภิปรายเรื่องการความเข้าใจการต่อสู้
Tomorrow we'll be free Keep my head high, deep in my heart I'll never have any doubt The baddest time Tomorrow we'll be free Palestine Tomorrow we'll be free I saw those rockets and bombs shining in the sky Like drops of rain in the sun's light Taking away everyone dead to my heart Destroying my dreams in a blink of an eye What happened to our human rights? What happened to the sanctity of life? And all those other lies I know that I'm only a child But is your conscience still alive? Every precious grain of sand Every stone And every tree Cause no matter what they do They can never hurt you Cause your soul Will always be free Question uh, للعالم لكل انسان في العالم لكل انسان بينعم بحريته ليش احنا بنتحاصر يعني شو عملنا شو ذنب شعب كامل يتحاصر داخل حدود ضيقه لاسباب هو مش عارفها يعني تهيأ لي احنا ما عملنا شيء لنتحاصر عليه او نحبس عليه نحبس عليه نحبس عليه فلسطين Tomorrow will be free. Oh, my goodness! Save time. Not more than five Palestine, tomorrow will be free. Palestine, past, present, and future. p a w i k r i t Palestine, a d i p a c h u b a n and a k o t n a n p r a c h u m w i c h a k a r a d a p n a n a c h a t 22และ23พฤศจิกายน2561นักอาคารมหาจุฬาลงกรณ์จุฬาลงกรณ์มหาวิทยาลัยกิจกรรมเด่นภายในงานการแสดงสนทรพจน์การบรรยายและเสวนาวิชาการจากผู้ทรงคุณวุฒิทั้งในและต่างประเทศการแสดงนิทรรศการวุฒิทัศน์ปาเลสไตน์โดยวิทยากรในประเทศวิทยากรต่างประเทศหนังสือของที่ระลึกมากมายงานประชุมวิชาการที่จะทำให้เราทบทวนและพัฒนาองค์ความรู้ในการเปลี่ยนแปลงของสถานการณ์โลกและเอเชียด้านปัญหาปาเลสไตน์ได้อย่างครอบคลุมทุกด้านและพบกับกิจกรรมอื่นๆมากมายจัดโดยศูนย์มุสลิมศึกษาสถาบันเอเชียศึกษาจุฬาลงกรณ์มหาวิทยาลัย
่ร่วมกับสภาเครือข่ายช่วยเหลือด้านมนุษยธรรมสำนักจุฬาราชมนตรีและเครือข่ายมหาวิทยาลัยكما حلمت أن تعود منشد اللحن الكفاح من تراه سوف ياتي حاملا طهر الوشاح قلت يا أقصى تناهل إن في القدس صلاح إن في القدس رجالا أبصر درب الفناء قدسنا أمسى التنادي صوتها عم البطاء أين هاتك الليالي أين عشاق الفناء في القدس جبالا راسية لا تزاح أيقنوا أن الظلام سوف يجلو الصباح هيا يا أقصى لننسى كل أيام النواح نتبع نهج الرسول إنه سر النجاح قدسنا أمسى تنادي صوتها عم البطاح أين هاتك الليالي أين عشاق الفلاح قدسنا أمسى تنادي تنادي قدسنا أمسى تنادي صوتها عم البطاح أين هاتك الليالي أين Hari ini kau gagah berkasa, kau riang ceria. Engkau bebas ke mana mana. Kau digelar pemuda, kau harapan bangsa, kau tunjang agama. Mahukah kau bangkit bersama Sahuti seruan Seorang pembela Menjadi contoh taulah dan mulia Pembawa rahmat Ke alam buana Mari kita cipta sejarah Usaha ditambah keringat dicurah Ilmu digali iman ditambah erat Hubungan jalinkan ukhuan Bangkitlah aku Tunaikan janji-janji Inilah harapan Tunaikan kewajiban Tanggung jawab lebih banyak dari masa Oh, 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 oh,
Every day we tell each other That this day will be, will be the last And tomorrow we all can go home free And all this will finally end Palestine, tomorrow will be free Palestine, tomorrow will be free แขกผู้มีเกียรติด้านนอกเข้าสู่ห้องประชุมครับพี่น้องที่อยู่ด้านนอกนะครับขอเรียนเชิญเข้ามาในหอประชุมเลยนะครับเรากำลังจะเริ่มเซสชั่นต่อไปแล้วนะครับทีมงานช่วยชักชวนพี่น้องที่อยู่ด้านนอกนะครับให้เข้ามาในหอประชุมได้แล้วครับสลามอะลัยกุมบาร์ฮ์มัตุลลาฮ์อับรักาตุบิสมิลลาฮิรราะห์มานุรราะห์อิมอัลฮัมดุลลาฮิรับบินอัลลอฮ์มีนวบีนัสตาอิน Peace, mercy, and blessing of God be upon you in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Dear distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this session. The topic of the panel discussion. Is the occupied territories and international law, which is one of the main part of the international seminar on Palestine in the past, present, and future. From yesterday, I have confidence that you have known the facts of past and present, and the future trends of Palestine in various dimensions. For this session, we are going to talk on the issue of land under the occupation of international law. Most panelists have presented more information, understandings with the excellent ability in this issue. We've known very well Palestinians have owned the land of Jerusalem for a long time, but it was designated. At the site of Israel for the reason of some superpowers, then making up the international law that is Israel can have rights over the land of Palestinians. This action has caused much pain, not only Palestinians, but also making pain to the global people who love justice and love their accuracy very well. In the point of Israel-Palestine and the occupation territories, the question of Palestine 
and Israel has commanded the attention of the UN since the organization was founded. The UN generally, General Assembly voted the original partition of the land in November 1947, and the UN deployed its first peacekeeping operation to monitor the ceasefire lines after the war of 1948. This size mm. introduces us mm. to the key issues with a special focus on UN involvement in the conflict. Ladies and gentlemen, for many years, success, successive Israeli governments refused to consider a Palestinian star. Why most Arab denied the legitimacy of Israel? In the 1970s, both sides began to recognize the need for compromise. The Palestinians proposed a separate state, claiming as, the, as their homeland the territories outside the 1948 ceasefire lines, territories occupied by the Israel in the 1967 war. This idea found widespread support in the international community and Israel was called on the withdrawal from this land, as affirmed in UN Security Council Resolution 242 and 338. Since Resolution 242 and 338, the Security Council has taken no significant steps to end the Israel-Palestine conflict. United States influence has generally kept the issue of the Kausin agenda. When Kausin members have introduced resolutions responding to periodic, periodic crisis, the U.S. has repeatedly used symbolic weight. Both bodies would have been more effective if governments had been willing to confront U.S. displeasure and U.S. pressure. Recent U.S. policy has only made matter worse. And the part of uh, Palestinian statehood under international law. May I uh, mention about the an analysis and discussion by John M. B. Baluzier that to summarize about this, this, uh, this point. Although the resolution does not cons constitute binding international law that uh, Dr. Chaiwat mentioned this morning, it does bring Palestine one step further towards statement on the both the constitutive and declarative theories. The vote shows that Palestine has significant recognition by the international community as a state, thus fulfilling the criterion of the constitutive theory, which while being flawed is still adhered to, be, to by some contemporary theories. Moreover, with Palestine's formal recognition by uh, more than 100 countries, it will be able to effectively enter into relationship with other states, which is one of the four elements of the declarative theory test. Thus, why the General Assembly resolution is not dispositive of Palestine statehood it is evidence to growing recognition of Palestine as a state. Now, I would like to uh, welcome Dr. Nippon to uh, next one about this. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Wisrut Loiti. Uh, 
Uh, first of all, uh, we have known that uh, this session is on uh, occupied territories and interne international laws. And we have two panelists who, who are right now, only one, are, who, only one is on the stage, which is uh, Mr. Imtiaz Mukbil, and the other one is Dr. Uh, Sunai Pasuk. Because he got some health problems, uh, he got a low, a low blood pressure. Right now, he rest and park somewhere. Okay, and I think he will enjoy us very soon. Uh, first of all, I I will not talk very much. Uh, I will introduce uh, our panelists. The first one, Mr. Imtiaz Mukbil. Uh, he also uh, told me before uh, coming to the stage that don't read too much. Okay, I will uh, only introduce that he is a famous journalist. Uh, he joined uh, Bangkok Post in 1928 and he got a lot of uh, rewards and awards. Uh, in international awards, especially the award of journalistic contribution to the travel industry. Uh, in 2005, uh, Pata Journalist Award for coverage of the tsunami disaster. And uh, his, with his expertise, I think he can give us the views and insights on the international laws and the occupied territories where we have the problem right now. So please welcome him with your claps. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, moderator, chairman, for your for your warm words and your and your and your introduction. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I would be very happy um, if functions like this began to adhere to the principles of Islam and the need for punctuality. Uh, punctuality is a critical element of Islam. The sun rises on time and sets on time. The namaz, azak always comes on time. Uh, our seasons are always on time. But in the Muslim world, we have a huge problem making sure that we meet our punctuality standards nature put into the Quran Sharif and the way our world is constructed into our conferences. Nothing ever begins on time, nothing ever finishes on time. And I think we need to do more to become better Muslims by becoming more punctual in the way we handle these things. Uh, I personally find it extremely disrespectful and insulting to everybody when things get run over time like this because somebody else means that you have to eat into somebody else's time. Uh, it creates all kinds of problems. It is very un-Islamic and I think we should start showing a little bit more respect to our principles and beginning and ending these functions on time <coughs> according to the program. So I just want to mention that and I hope I will not have to see this in future again. Um, I uh, want to also point out that I wrote a very controversial column in the Bangkok Post for many years. It was called Soul Searching. And it was the most uh, pro-Palestinian column, the pro-Islamic, pro-Arab world column in the Bangkok Post for many, many years. And one day, of course, the column became too controversial and it got terminated. Uh, I will be happy to tell you the history about why this column got terminated privately. Uh, but it was, I knew it was going to happen sooner or later. But that's my main claim to fame. I enjoyed writing this column. It had a lot of support. A lot of people found that it was very refreshing to put a different perspective on this. And also, I want to also commend the courage of institutions like Chula. Because uh, as uh, Achan Sarawut told me, there are a lot of always regular um, seminars and forums on terrorism. 
And of course, when they talk about terrorism, they're only talking about Muslim terrorism. They don't talk about terrorism by anybody else. They don't talk mm -hmm. about mass shootings, violence, anything else. Terrorists are always, in today, Muslims. And once in a while, it always use, it's always useful to put a different subject, a different perspective uh, on some of the root causes and contexts of what Nelson Mandela did, refused to call terrorism, but he called it armed struggle in South Africa. It was called armed struggle. And he justified it when he said, according to what you heard uh, earlier on from Achan Chaiwat, that when you are up against F-16s and M-16s and guns and, and missiles, and people are only throwing rocks, it's not terrorism, it's armed struggle. And those are not my words, but Nelson, Mandela's, Nelson Mandela's words, uh, and one of the greatest revolutions of the last century. Um, can you just put a, start the slide, please? Okay. Now, the topic of this session is uh, related to the law. And I think I'd like to start off by saying that the fundamental premise of the rule of law is that no one, no one is above the law. In any society where you find that somebody claims that, in the, in the, in the words of George Orwell, that all people are created equal, but some people are created more equal than others. Well, in that case, that means there is always a level of superiority and you have that some people, the law applies to some people and will not apply to other people. In that case, you have already got a recipe for disaster and violence and instability. Next slide. I will now give you some examples of where this rule of law is not being applied in the context of the Israeli of the Palestinian conflict. Thank you. Oh, I can use that? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, this is a document released by the United Nations. It is a publicly available document. It is a report on a meeting that was held on the, on the, I think, if I see it correctly, on the 8th of November. It was on the sovereignty of Arab population in occupied Syrian Golan and the Palestinian people over their natural resources. That's the title of this document official United Nations release. Now if you see what it says over there, that it was, it was uh, pr uh, proposed by the representative of Egypt, and it pointed out the crisis in the United Nations Relief and Works Agency about how the, cutting, the cut in funding is affecting the, the condition of the Palestinian people. And if you see the last paragraph, it says it was adopted by a record vote of 149 in favor and six against. And see the countries that are voted against. Canada, Israel, Marshall Islands, Micronesia, Nauru, and the United States with 12 abstentions. Now, in any democratic society, if you lose a vote like that, that would be more than a landslide. That would be literally like a walkover. I mean, this is a nearly unanimous vote. But basically, this is not just in this committee. It happens all the time in numerous general assemblies, et cetera, et cetera, all through the United Nations. And there is a lot of records, official records, out in the public domain about all these UN meetings, which are regularly discussing the issue of Palestine, and all of them, they lose by these landslide votes. All of them on, in, on, on the Palestinian issue. You get a small number of countries that vote against, that support the Israeli position, just a small number. So by any democratic standards, this is a complete travesty. But the, what happens is that the, basically the Israelis just ignore it. And if you see the representative of Israel, he denounced this as an opposite of what a United Nations resolution should be. He said it's a political agenda in search of a document number. Now for most governments, it would be an extremely insulting to do, thing to do. That when you're voting in favor of a resolution and the country that is the occupying power says this is nothing but a political agenda in search of a document number. This is an official record of the United Nations. To most governments, this would be an extreme insult 
to have your government's position dismissed in this way. But they get away with it. I'm not disputing, I'm not going into any judgments, I'm just putting out the facts before you so that eventually you make up your own minds about the, uh, the rule of law and the application. Now this is what the representative of Thailand said. Thailand voted in favor of the, uh, of, of the resolution and made this, uh, made this position about how they actually been contributing to the Palestinian cause, they pay to the UNRWA, this is all our tax money going to support the Palestinian position and the United Nations, uh, the, uh, the, the Relief and Works Agency, which has basically been coming under huge pressure because of the funding cuts. So, you now have the Royal Thai government voting in favor of a resolution which is then dismissed by the Israelis as a political agenda looking for a document number. Now, there is something seriously wrong with the way this is being handled. And perhaps it needs a little bit more investigative detail because the, 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 the statement by the Royal Thai government's representative is also in the public domain. We now have an official statement that says they support the UN position on this. Landslide vote against the Israelis, but they ignored it. Let me move on to another part of this thing. A little flashback might be useful. In the early 1990s, uh, there was a priest process which has been mentioned several times by, by many speakers called the Oslo Accord. I have kept a copious historical record of this over the years and I'm going to present a few details for you. Again, I'm just giving you the facts. I'm not making any judgment calls. You make up your own mind as to what you want to do. None of this, I'm not making any of this up. This was what was going on, negotiations known as the Oslo Accords in, in the early 1990s. So this was the cover of Time magazine. In 1993, they signed this deal, which also made the cover of Time magazine. Uh, sorry, Newsweek magazine. Uh, it's a deal. This was between uh, Yasser Arafat and the man who then became the Prime Minister of Israel called Yitzhak Rabin, who was also mentioned by, by uh, uh, Achan Chaiwat. And it's very interesting, he mentioned that quote when, uh, when Yitzhak Rabin was the defense minister and his policy was to break the bones of the Palestinians. But when he became the prime minister of his country, he had a completely different perspective. As defense minister, his job was to break the bones of the Palestinians. As prime minister, his job was to make peace with them. A complete change in mind. Now, and I will show you, I heard this personally. In nine, on, the fourth, on the 2nd of November 1995, I was the only journalist from Asia in Tel Aviv when Yitzhak Rabin made this speech at the Hotel, International Hotel Association. This was the last speech he made at an international conference on the 2nd of November 1995. And if you see that what he says there, that emblem, it says peace through tourism. Peace through tourism. It was a tourism conference. I covered the travel industry. I was very proud to be the ocean only journalist from Asia speaking, uh, uh, sorry, attending this conference at which Yitzhak Rabin was the keynote speaker. And he made a passionate speech about why he wanted to make peace with the Palestinians. What was the main reason why he was doing it? And his feeling at that time was that this is not a conflict that is going to be solved by military means. You can continue to spend more and more guns and ammunition he said he was mainly doing it for the young people because he, as a general, had been through a lifetime of wars and he felt it was about time to stop that and give the young people of Israel a future that was based on peace, not on constant war, one after the other. And I heard him say that. It was one of the best speeches I have ever heard at a travel and tourism conference on the 2nd of November, 1995. On the 4th of November, guess what happened? On the 4th, anybody know what happened on the 4th of November, 1995? Not you, Nick, not you. Anybody know? Sorry? He was assassinated. He was assassinated. You know by who? This man. One of the young people that he was trying to save from wars. A young Jewish terrorist who shot his own prime minister because he did not want the prime minister to make peace with the Arabs. His name is not Khalid, his name is not Muhammad. It is Yigal Amir. Two weeks, two days after this happened. 
Now, I happen to be the only journalist there. And in the beginning, when we heard this news, nobody could believe that, oh, that it was a Jew who had shot another Jew. Normally, the only people who do the killings are the Muslims. Well, this was not a Muslim who had done the killing. It was a Jew who killed his own prime minister because he didn't want the young people to go off and fight another war. At that time, this news was all over CNN. And people like me, who look a little bit Arab, we were scared to go out into the streets because we thought there would be lynch mobs. You know, they, it would become an anti-Palestinian, anti anti-Arab pogrom. But soon it became clear that it was a Jew who had shot him. And this is what the face of the man after he shot him. He seems really happy that he guy shot him. Pretty happy, right? Just look at his face. Quite amazing. Right? This is the man he wanted to stop the Prime Minister from making peace with the Arabs. Two days later, on the 6th of November, I was still there. I went down to take pictures in the place where he was shot. And you see all these young people whose hopes had suddenly gone down the drain. I took pictures of all the candlelight that were being... Because the Prime Minister had given hope to the young people. And these are some of the pictures that I am sh showing you probably for the first time. Hundreds and thousands of people turned up to mourn this man. Candle lights all over the place. Young people just gathering there in tribute. Milli hundreds of them. These are pictures that I personally have taken because I saw the, the destroyed hopes of these people. And of course, there was a lot of discussion in the newspapers and the media after that. Will peace survive? Some interesting elements. This again was in the 1990s. There was a discussion about the role of the Israeli extremists within their own society. And if you see if, uh, the, the, the wording that is used over here, on top it says extremists. The Israeli moderates against the Israeli extremists, because they had just witnessed this. And here it says, uh, the, on the top, it says the radical right. Radical right. Uh, I'm already being told three minutes. I'm sorry, I can't do this. This is, you'll have to, you'll, uh, you, you'll have to be a little bit more generous with your time. Uh, radical right. Normally, radical is only used in terms, of, in terms of, of the Muslims. Well, now it's also being used with the Jewish extremists because they're also Jewish and radical. And here, settlers, violence in the West Bank. Again, not Muslims, Jews, extremists. Same as the Muslims, no difference. They also kill people. No difference at all for political reason. And if you see, what happened was, there was a, a very good explanation uh, at, the, at the time of the peace process when this was going on. Man says at the top, it's quoted, peace will make Tel Aviv the Hong Kong of the Middle East. Arabs would ship their goods via Israeli ports, filling the east-west highways in the country with motels, gas stations, money. Peace and money go together. But there was a more important reason. If you see the second paragraph, what this man says, he says, I don't care about the Arabs, I care about him. Read the bottom where he says, pointing to his four-year-old son. I don't want him bursting into Arab homes at 2 a.m. in the morning or shooting women and children in the street. The Intifada has corrupted a whole generation of Israelis. Again, exactly what Achan, Achan Chai, uh, uh, Chaiwat mentioned earlier on. If we, must fight, if we must fight the Arabs, it should be nation against nation. This is, he was talking about his four-year-old son wouldn't have to go out there and, do, and, and, and fight these constant wars. Well, the final line he says, very interesting, I expect my son will be a soldier, but I hope he never has to be an oppressor. Mm. I hope he never has to be an oppressor. Well, unfortunately, that's exactly what's happened. They've become oppressors. And the next, I will show you headlines just over the last few days. This is what is happening. The oppression is continuing. Daily, shootings, killings, demolitions, occupation. These are just headlines. You can read them for yourself. Israeli soldiers bombard Palestinian students with tear gas. Israel demolishes 20 shops. Lawmaker among 20 Palestinians detained in West Bank raids. Young Palestinians shot by soldiers. Israeli forces raid 50 homes in northern West Bank town. 
Alleged young Jerusalem attacker dies of wounds. Israel detained over 900 Palestinian children since the beginning of this year. You saw some figures uh, mentioned by Madam Anne Wright earlier, earlier today. Lawyer tells he was severely beaten by answering, security, uh, answering summons by, uh, by Israeli security. Israeli settlers vandalize playing ground in West Bank village. Israeli forces attack peaceful protest. 25 Palestinian protesters, Israeli Navy shoots and injures 25 Palestinian protesters. Israeli army seizes residential caravan. Israeli bulldozers demolish home, mobile home north of Jerusalem. Palestinian formally forced at gunpoint to, the, to, to leave their land in, in, in Bethlehem. It just goes on and on and on. Are these soldiers or oppressors? What is going on here? I'm not making this up. These are just facts out there. You make up your own mind. I'm just telling you exactly what it was 90, in 1993 in the peace process and what is going on today. Are they soldiers or oppressors? Is this what they want to see happening? Now, let me show you, this is something that will be of great interest to the women in the audience. This is another report by the United Nations. Again, rule of law, humanitarian. Human rights of the Palestinian people in, in the occupied Palestinian territory. Now, this is about medical treatment for the, for the Palestinians. According to international humanitarian law governing occupation, the occupying power is obliged to protect the population of the occupied territory, notably to treat the protected persons humanely. Impact on the right to health. Israel, if you're in occupied Palestine, you need permits to even get medical treatment. If you're living in Gaza, you need to get a permit to go to the West Bank, to go to Egypt for medical treatment. Between June 2017 to 30th May 2018, 21,443 medical exit per permit applications were submitted to Israeli authorities. 19,583 were delayed or denied on security grounds. United Nations report, okay? It gets even worse. Many patients reported missing. Uh, maybe you can't read it at the back. Uh, these slides are all available publicly. Pro patients have died due to de delays. Now listen to this. In, in June 97, 2017, a Palestinian mother of nine children diagnosed with breast cancer for which there is no radiotherapy available in Gaza. She went applied for medical treatment and died because they, would not, they, they, they could not get treatment for her. Breast cancer, what is the security problem with a woman with nine children with breast cancer? Can anybody explain that? Is this humanity? And it goes on and they get away with it. Same thing happened. Again, most of my slides, these slides are all available. You can read this. These are all publicly available documents. So I will, I will take this through. A 15-month-old girl with cerebral oedema was referred outside. The baby girl was hospitalized for 33 days. The mother was not granted a permit for the follow-up appointment. And it goes on. A man died also for the same reason. Same thing, hostilities. These are all quotes from the UN report. I'm not making this up. You can make up your own mind. Why is this going on? Here is a quote from the Israeli Prime Minister at the United Nations. Today, we, the Jewish people, have the power to defend ourselves. He said this at the United Nations General Assembly in public, 29th of November, September 2014. We will expose their lies against us in the court of public opinion. Israel will continue to stand proud and unbowed. Proud and unbowed, denying people medical treatment, shooting, demolishing their houses. Proud and unbowed. I think something is seriously wrong with this place. Again, self-destructing. It's eating away at their own internal thing. And he says, today we, the Jewish people, not the Israeli people, the Jewish people have the power to defend ourselves. This is defending yourself. Something seriously wrong over here. And this is what is basically happening. Why is this power? Again, publicly available information. This magazine is, everybody knows Forbes magazine, right? Big financial magazine, right? They just released their list of the 400 richest people in the world. Number one, Jeff Bezos. Number two, uh, and number four down there, Mark Zuckerberg. 
And these are some more. I'll tell you, I'll tell you all the names of these people up there uh, in, in the, on the next slide, along with the slide. These are the 10 most, people, most powerful people in the world. Jeff Bezos, 160 billion. Mark Zuckerberg, 61 billion. Larry Ellison, 58.4 billion. Larry Page, 53.8 billion. David and Charles Koch together, more than 100 billion. Sergey Brin and Michael Bloomberg, all Jews. Jewish, we the Jewish people have the power to defend ourselves. Of the 10 top richest people in the world, eight are Jews, in mostly in the international community. I am not making this up. These are all facts. You make up your own mind. All right? Now look at the next slide. That's a total value of $544 billion, their total value. <laughs> that is bigger than the Thailand's GDP. More money in those hands of those eight people than the entire wealth of this country. I'm not making this up. You can make the, I'm just researching the facts for you. You make up your own mind as to what you want to do. Last few slides. I, in spite of all this, these challenges and the formidable opposition that we face, I am still very, very confident that Palestine will win eventually. What happens basically is that the Israelis now have what you know, what, is, what I call a live and let die policy, which means we live and the others die. And in today's world, that is really not sustainable because sooner or later, history has shown that people become the tight turns eventually. When people become rich and powerful, two things happen. They become arrogant. And when you become arrogant, you make mistakes. And when you start making mistakes, that's the beginning of the end. And there is another side to that. When you're number one, when you're number one and you're on top, the only way you can go next is down. You cannot go any further up. You can only go down. So it depends on how long. My impression is that no empire lasts forever. Not the Ottoman Empire, not the Roman Empire, not the Chinese Empire, not the Turkish Empire, not the Iranian Greco Greek Empire. No empire lasts forever. Sooner or later, no matter how rich and powerful you are, eventually you fall because you become the victim of your own arrogance and mistake. And as I have pointed out, all these facts are beginning to pile up slowly and slowly and slowly. This is a country that is now running from the truth. Truth. If you, if, you get, if you criticize them, they silence you, just like happened with me at the Bangkok Post. They'll, they'll, they'll find some way of silencing you, shutting you up, uh, find some way of doing it. Because as the Prime Minister of Israel himself said, we the Jewish people, and I'm quoting the Prime Minister, we the Jewish people have the, have the power to defend ourselves. Stole, bed and breakfast on stolen land. Let's talk beyond, go beyond talk shops. My question now is after this forum, what are we going to do next? Final conclusion. Why, frankly, all this BDS and all that boycott, divestment, sanctions, etc., et is all very well. I'm saying let's do it the other way around. Let's all join in a campaign to visit Palestine. The Royal Thai government recognizes a two-state solution, which means we should be able to apply to go and visit Palestine legally. We should not have to go and apply for a visa at the Israeli embassy. If you go land a mass movement to visit Palestine, to me, that would be the most phenomenal non-violent movement that you can have. People have every right to go and visit the place. So go and visit, apply for a visa, see how you get treated, land up at the border checkpoint, go through all the interrogation and, and, and checkpoints, experience that yourself and then come back and then flood your social media, write about it, talk about your experiences, expose the truth. Line up for visas at, 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 the, at the Israeli embassy here and see how many people, whether they have enough manpower to process all those visa applications. Phenomenal. And if you do that in Thailand, well and good, you can also do this in other places, in the Philippines, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in all these places. And then look at the movement. Look at the, move, uh, the power of the, of the right to do what our own governments say is correct. Our governments vote against all the Israelis on, in the international stage. We recognize Palestine as a state. We give it money and we give it support. Well, why not go and visit Palestine? Create jobs for the Palestinian people. Talk to them. Rela uh, hear their side of the story. And then come back and talk about the experiences. And let the truth come out. 
The more truth that comes out, you, believe me, the facts will basically set you free. Essentially, that is really my argument. The law eventually follows public opinion. Politician, politi political leaders only turn the tide when they see that it is in their favor to do so. And today, forget about all the, I mean, BDS and all is all very good. Uh, you, can, you can try that. But I actually think the other way around. Go out there and support the Palestinian people. Go and visit Palestine. You will have to go through Israel as well anyway, because at the checkpoint, this is how you're going to be greeted. But give that a crack, and I think basically this will be a far more effective way of, uh, of, of converting public opinion and doing the right thing. And thank you very much indeed for the opportunity. I admire your courage, uh, Achan Sarawut, for, for putting this forum together. Uh, please keep up the good work, and I look forward to having many more, more forums such in future. And thank you for the invitation. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Muk uh, Imtiaz Mukbil. Uh, we have heard about uh, the occupied territories, and we also have the occupied stage also here, because <laughs> only one uh, fear. Okay, for the panelists. So that the time is so tight, uh, so we cannot uh, give you more time. And then we have only uh, the time for the question, and we will limit only one question. Because uh, if anyone, okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Sharif. I'm Palestinian. Actually, the term occupied territories it makes me nervous. Why? Because the definition of occupied territories is just 22% of Palestine, which is now the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. But we believe all Palestine is unoccupied territories. So this is the first. The second, I want to inform, if we, anyone want, uh, wants to visit Palestine, he should or he must cross the Israeli border. So even there is a peace agreement between the Palestinian Authority and the Israeli uh, authorities and the occupation authorities, they don't allow the Palestinian to have airport, to, to, to have free cross board borders, anything they don't have. So even the Palestinian people who wants to go to his homeland to his uh, hometown, he should cross the Israeli border, and some of them sh may, may, ta may be taken to the jail. This is just, thank you very much. This is not a question. <laughs> thank you. Do they express any opinion on that? Or no? Just no. A que it's not a question anyway. OK. Yes. Any, any more, one more question at the back? Raise your hand. There's one at the back. OK. My name is Dennis. On behalf of Thai Muslim Community, uh, the Thai Muslim Student Association, TMSA, uh, I just would like to, uh, you just mentioned about nonviolent uh, rights. And just to make it a little bit more practical, is that any like, practical chance that we ask Thai to apply for, you say, a uh, Palestine visa to go? Because I know that uh, as a to apply for Israel uh, visa is, is possible, but what about you saying about uh, Palestine visa? Yeah, just, just to that's, just that's, curious. Uh, that's exactly the kind of curiosity that I was hoping to generate. Yeah. Please go and find out for yourself. Go, and, <laughs> go, go, to, go to the foreign ministry and ask them what is, I, if, the, if, the, if the, the Royal Thai government recognizes Palestine as a, it, it does not recognize the occupation. Mm. There is recognition, and the, the foreign ministry organizes, I, uh, every one or two years, they actually organize, uh, 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 they, they, they help uh, Palestinian tourism people to come here and learn from the benefit of the uh, Thai tourism experience. Right? So it is official policy to recognize Palestine. Well, if there is a recognition of a state called Palestine, every Thai has a right to go and visit it. So please go to the foreign ministry and make your own judgment. Yeah, but we do. I, I personally believe that uh, as a 
you know, um, seminar today that we may, you know, make some certain impact, uh, you know, publicly. And I do believe that some of, you know, of you guys as, a, you know, high authority should be able to uh, maybe, you know, advance this peace process. I mean, just in order to, you know, to, to allow as a Thai, uh, you know, citizen to, to, to go and, you know, explore and, you know, we would like to, you know, at least, you know, expose ourselves to, to uh, Palestine. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. I think, like I said, I mean, I, I'm a great believer in, in uh, all forms of nonviolent, democratic, uh, free expression of opinions, uh, protest, as long as it is within, within the rule of law. Visiting Palestine is official government policy because we, the government does support it. So I encourage you, please do take it up with the foreign ministry and find out from them what is the process by which I can go and visit Palestine and then, then follow the process and then come back and then write about it and then explain it to other Thais so that they find out. I, and I, I really want young people like you to actually set that ball rolling because really it is within your rights to do it. You're not doing anything illegal. You're not doing anything, any, anything controversial. Please follow up that question. That's exactly what I wanted to see happen. My objective of coming here is actually complete. Okay, thank you Just very much. Just with that question yeah, alone. Inshallah, maybe we, we go together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? Inshallah, we, what about we just go together as a group? <laughs> Even better. Now it's already become a group. Wonderful. Now it's not just one person. Now it's becoming a movement. Excellent. That's, that's, that's the point we're here today anyway. Thank you very much. You, what can you, I mean, if, if, if 300 Thais tomorrow go up and queue up there at the, at the Israeli embassy, what are they going to do? Shoot you? <laughs> of course not. You're applying for a visa. What? Well, that's exactly my question. That's he, that's he should ask the foreign ministry. Why should I need to apply for a visa? Why do I need to apply for a visa at the, at the Israeli embassy if I need to go and visit Palestine? That's like me, if suppose, for example, if I, a foreigner wants to come to Thailand and has to go to the embassy of Burma to apply for a visa. I'm sorry, no country will accept it. Yeah. You go to the country. So if the, if the government is recognizing it, well, please, you know, I need to know the process of visiting that country. How do I do that? A very important question. Thank you. My objective in coming here. Thank you very much. It's complete. ครับขอเสียงเพิ่มเติมเป็นเกียรติครับแล้วก็เราคงต้องขออนุญาตใช้เวลาช่วงนี้เบรกครับอาจารย์เชิญครับในช่วงฟลอร์ดันนี้คร
ครับในนามของคณะกรรมการจัดการสมนาต้องขอขอบคุณวิทยากรทุกท่านนะครับในการอภิปรายเรื่องดินแดนภายใต้การยึดครองในมิติกฎหมายระหว่างประเทศช่วงนี้ขอเชิญครับท่านอาจารย์ดรสรวุฒิอารีผู้อำนวยการศูนย์มุสลิมศึกษาสถาบันเอเชียศึกษาจุฬาลงกรณ์มหาวิทยาลัยได้กรุณามอบของที่ระลึกครับครับขอเชิญครับทุกท่านครับอินเทสท่านแรกครับขอเชิญท่านอาจารย์ดรวิสุทธ์เลาะวิถีครับผู้ดำเนินการอภิปรายนะครับครับนั่นคือต่อไปครับขอเชิญท่านอาจารย์วิสรุตเลาะวิถีครับถ้ารูปจะสลับกันก็ไม่เป็นไรนะเดี๋ยวจะสลับกันครับบอกไม่รูปสลับนะครับท่านต่อไปท่านอาจารย์วิสรุตเลาะวิถีครับดรวิสรุตเลาะวิถีมุนซิดรูปสลับอยู่นะครับท่านต่อไปขอเชิญครับดรนิพนธ์โซเฮงครับจากมหาวิทยาลัยรามคำแหงครับขอบคุณท่านอาจารย์สารวุฒิอารีครับที่ได้กรุณามอบของเรื่องเกี่ยวกับกรผมขออนุญาตทำความเข้าใจก่อนนะครับจะเพิ่งออกจากห้องประชุมนะครับขอเวลาสักนาที2นาทีทำความเข้าใจถึงภารกิจกิจกรรมในช่วงบ่ายดีครับในหลังจากนี้ครับจะเป็นการรับประทานอาหารกลางวันนะครับรวมถึงปฏิบัติศาสนกิจซึ่งใช้ห้อง103เป็นห้องทําพิธีละหมาดหรือขัดข้องอะไรเจ้าหน้าที่จะรอแจ้งอยู่ด้านนอกนะครับเราจะพักรับประทานอาหารกันตั้งแต่ช่วงเวลา12นาฬิกาเป็นต้นไปและหลังจากนั้น13นาฬิกา12นาฬิกา30นาทีเราจะเข้าสู่การละหมาดจุมาตวันศุกร์ที่นี่ที่อาคารนี้นะครับและหลังจากนั้นเราจะกลับเข้ามาสู่ห้องประชุมแต่เราจะไปห้องประชุมที่1 1 1นะครับในการอภิปรายเรื่องบทบาทของกลุ่มเคลื่อนไหวทั่วโลกเพื่อรณรงค์การคว่ำบาตรครับเอ่อเอใบมงโอประธานโทษครับบายมงตรงนะฮะบายมงตรงเราจะเข้าสู่ห้องประชุม Ladies and gentlemen right after this we we all will have a lunch break and at the same time during lunch after we have lunch uh, all the gentlemen please uh, go to room 103 Uh, to have our our Jumat prayer together, and uh, and after uh, we we should be back in this room to begin our afternoon session at one o'clock sharp. Uh, but before that, before you go, uh, I have just got a ring that is forgotten left uh, in the in the male's bath bathroom here. Yeah, so if any of you uh, know that you have lost your ring, uh, please come up to the stage and let me know. Uh, So, ครับหลังจากนั้นบ่ายโมงตรงอ้าวเดี๋ยวลืมเรื่องแหวนอีกเรื่องหนึ่งนะครับมีท่านที่ลืมแหวนในห้องทำความสะอาดในห้องน้ำนะครับท่านใดที่เป็นเจ้าของแหวนก็มาขอรับคืนได้ที่เจ้าหน้าที่ของเรานะครับที่อยู่ด้านหน้าเวทีแห่งนี้ครับบ่ายโมงตรงเราจะพบกันที่ห้องหนึ่งหนึ่งหนึ่งนะครับอาคารมหาจุฬาลงกรณ์แห่งนี้นะครับ Uh, and the afternoon session. This is important. The afternoon session will begin in another room, not this room. You will, we will meet up in room 111 on the other side of this building. Room 111 in the afternoon. We will change the room to that room. So please, and please know that uh, after the lunch break, we will meet up in room 111. Thank you very much, everybody, and see you in the afternoon. Sona, Sona. ปาเลสไตน์ past present and future ภาวิกฤตปาเลสไตน์อดีตปัจจุบันและอนาคตงานประชุมวิชาการระดับนานาชาติ22และ23พฤศจิกายน2561ณอาคารมหาจุฬาลงกรณ์จุฬาลงกรณ์มหาวิทยาลัยกิจกรรมเด่นภายในงานการแสดงสนทรพจน์
การบรรยายและเสวนาวิชาการจากผู้ทรงคุณวุฒิทั้งในและต่างประเทศการแสดงนิทรรศการวุฒิทัศน์ปาเลสไตน์โดยวิทยากรในประเทศวิทยากรต่างประเทศหนังสือของที่ระลึกมากมายงานประชุมวิชาการที่จะทำให้เราทบทวนและพัฒนาองค์ความรู้ในการเปลี่ยนแปลงของสถานการณ์โลกและเอเชียด้านปัญหาปาเลสไตน์ได้อย่างครอบคลุมทุกด้านและพบกับกิจกรรมอื่นๆมากมายจัดโดยศูนย์มุสลิมศึกษาสถาบันเอเชียศึกษาจุฬาลงกรณ์มหาวิทยาลัยร่วมกับสภาเครือข่ายช่วยเหลือด้านมนุษยธรรมสำนักจุฬาราชมนตรีและเครือข่ายมหาวิทยาลัยพาสพรีเซนต์แอนด์ฟิวเจอร์ภาวิกฤตปาเลสไตน์อดีตปัจจุบันและอนาคตงานประชุมวิชาการระดับนานาชาติ22และ23พฤศจิกายน2561ณอาคารมหาจุฬาลงกรณ์จุฬาลงกรณ์มหาวิทยาลัยกิจกรรมเด่นภายในงานการแสดงสนทรพจน์การบรรยายและเสวนาวิชาการจากผู้ทรงคุณวุฒิทั้งในและต่างประเทศการแสดงนิทรรศการบุริทัศน์ปาเลสไตน์โดยวิทยากรในประเทศวิทยากรต่างประเทศหนังสือของที่ระลึกมากมายงานประชุมวิชาการที่จะทำให้เราทบทวนและพัฒนาองค์ความรู้ในการเปลี่ยนแปลงของสถานการณ์โลกและเอเชียด้านปัญหาปาเลสไตน์ได้อย่างครอบคลุมทุกด้านและพบกับกิจกรรมอื่นๆมากมายจัดโดยศูนย์มุสลิมศึกษาสถาบันเอเชียศึกษาจุฬาลงกรณ์มหาวิทยาลัยร่วมกับสภาเครือข่ายช่วยเหลือด้านมนุษยธรรมสำนักจุฬาราชมนตรีและเครือข่ายมหาวิทยาลัยก
caress with my bare hands Every precious grain of sand Every stone and every tree Cause no matter what they do They can never hurt you Cause your soul will always be free سؤالي للعالم لكل انسان في العالم لكل انسان بينعم بحريته ليش احنا بنتحاصر يعني شو عملنا شو ذنب شعب كامل يتحاصر داخل حدود ضيقه لاسباب هو مش عارفها يعني تهيأ لي احنا ما عملنا شيء لنتحاصر عليه او نحبس عليه Palestine, tomorrow will be free. Palestine, tomorrow will be free. 